Welcome everybody. So today we are going to talk about the development of the science of microbiology. And I would like to give a brief background of microbiology. Biology is basically grouped into three broad groups where we study botany, the study of plants, then microbiology and zoology. In microbiology, we basically discuss about viruses, bacteria, algae, fungi and protozoa. Then what is microbes or what is microorganisms? We call microorganisms which are basically the size less than 0.2 mm or 200 micrometer. So, if we are unable to see these microorganisms beyond this level, we use a microscope to study those particular microorganisms and that is the science of microbiology. Now, what is the importance of microbiology? Why do we need to study microbiology? Because microbes are cause of several diseases of plants and animals. Then we need microbial products that are used for healing of ailments like antibiotics, vaccines, insulins, hormones. These are all derived from microorganisms. Then microbes are also used as such to manage plant diseases that we call is biological control. Then microbes are also source of various foods like cheese, yogurt, bread, soy sauce, beer, wine, etc. These food products would not have been existed if there were no microbes. Then microbes are also used for genetic transformation of plants and animals. So we have various uses of microbes and that is why we need to study microbiology. Now let us see how this science of microbiology developed. Let us go back to 1590 where Jensen was the first person who used two lenses to view certain small objects for the first time. Then it was Robert Hooke in 1660s who made a compound microscope for the first time and then later on it was Anthony van Leeuwenhoek who basically developed microscopes to study microorganisms or he is the person who first examined microorganisms in several objects like rainwater, pond water, teeth scrapping and virtually all materials he has examined. He named it those tiny organisms to be animalcules. Later on this has been renamed as microbes and that is why he was he's considered as father of microbiology because the first time the microbes were described by Anthony van Leeuwenhoek with the help of the microscope he developed. Then it was Francesco Redi uh, who basically there was a theory that was going on at the time that microbes are or life is originated from organic uh, matters. But he put this theory at rest because he found that that the maggots that originates from meat are basically larvae of flies that come and lay eggs on meat. So he has observed this phenomenon and he said that spontaneous generation of microbe is not from the organic sources. Then later on John Needham contradicted the observation of Francesco Redi and he said that the animalcules that the tiny organisms that arises in the broth of mutton is actually originated from mutton. So later on again Lazarus Palanzani, he again refuted the work of Needham and he said that if we boil the broth of mutton for a longer time, then this appearance of animalcules does not take place. That means the spontaneous generation theory is wrong. So it was Lazarus Palangeni who has given a strong evidence that spontaneous generation theory of microorganism is wrong. Then it was Semmelweis who for the first time he showed that the patients suffering from perpetual fever is basically get this fever when this contaminated blood is uh, through blood contamination. And he for the first time showed a region from where this type of ailments develop. He has related the disease with a source that is blood which was a significant development for that period it was in 1847. Then later on in John Snow in 1854 he said that uh, the cholera disease was mostly uh, people are affected cholera disease to, uh, who have consumed the municipal water supply. That means the cause of this disease cholera was present in the, uh, the sources in the 
municipal water supply. So again, this was a very strong association of microbes uh, with a cause. Then came the golden man that is Louis Pasteur, who basically uh, virtually showed the role of microbes very strongly, where he has a classical, he did a classical experiment uh, where he proved that microbes are associated for transformation of an organic infusion. That is the chemical changes that brought about is due to cause of certain microbes. The experiment he did was he has taken grape juice initially and when it was incubated, he changed, there is no fermentation. There was no, he observed no fermentation took place. Later on, what he did is he has taken grape juice and he added pure yeast to grape juice, then incubated and then he got very good quality wine. That means when yeast were added, he got good quality wine, which was not the case in the earlier case. Then he did another experiment where he used grape juice, then again he added yeast, but then he applied heat after it. That means heat will kill the yeast and when the yeast cells were killed, he did not get obtain any wine. Then in the next experiment, he used grape juice, then he added yeast, then he added some bacteria also in that infusion. He had then incubated and after incubation, what he got is that as bitter or bad qualities wine, that is a sour wine. That means with yeast, he got very good wine. When he added bacteria, the quality of the wine is deteriorated. So again, and he took another experiment, that is he used grape juice, yeast, bacteria the same way here. Again, he applied heat in this infusion. After that, heat is supposed to kill both yeast and bacteria. Then he added only yeast and incubated and he got good quality wine. So with this classical experiment, he has demonstrated that the microbes are responsible for changes in the organic infusions. Pasteur did several experiments. One, another one is that uh, he has put the rest of the spontaneous generation of life finally, where he has again did a classical experiment <coughs> where he has shown that he initially took a, a flask containing sterile uh, and he then uh, brought and he opened to air and he observed that life appears on that broth when the broth was exposed to air. Then he did another experiment where he the flask containing sterile broth and the neck was sealed and there was no life. The appearance of life was blocked when the neck of the bottle is sealed. Then he did another experiment where he showed that flask containing sterile blood, then he, the swan neck flask has a side arm and the arm is open, but in between, in the U, bottom of the U of the arm, he applied heat. That means the air that is coming through the neck uh, side arm is now being treated with heat. So there was no life. That means the air contains life and this life causes the changes in the sterile broth of the sterile flask. So with this particular experiment, he again finally gave a strong evidence that life does not originate spontaneously, rather the microbes that are present in soil, water and air, and they cause several changes, including diseases of humans and plants, and their spread can be stopped if we can work on this direction. So that has been a significant development in that particular field at that time. So that was the contribution of pasture.